A lot of times, a YouTube video will show somebody uh, showing an ideal conditions, outcome. I had to translate into uh, the reality that I'm cutting uh, probably 60% Douglas fir, 30% knotty pine, and so uh, here come five tips that you can use that'll virtually guarantee a straight cut every time. Hey, Howard here at 82 Maple. And for previous viewers of this channel, hey, the good news is the glasses I've been wearing for a week will be gone soon. Cataract surgery tomorrow. In the meantime, I wanna to respond to a viewer that uh, wrote in about asking the question of how to avoid wavy cuts. And so uh, here come five tips that you can use that'll virtually guarantee a straight cut every time. Hey, uh, of these five tips, none really more important than the other. The first one is not having the guides, in this case, the ceramic guides on the uh, Norwood HD 36 adjusted correctly. And I've used a little white marker here and thrown a, uh, uh, some yellow uh, from a paint pen I have just for contrast, but I tend to run the gullet, this part of the blade right there, uh, right even with the ceramic guide. There's still plenty of room around behind for to accommodate the ceramic guide that is behind the blade. The adjustment on this is super easy. Just back off that uh, a hex allen screw and uh, pull the little assembly forward or push it back. At worst, I don't let the blade extend more than one eighth of an inch out this way uh, from that guide. <laughs> Tip number two, uh, pushing the saw head too hard too fast. I had watched uh, a number of YouTube videos and a lot of times a YouTube video will show somebody uh, showing an ideal conditions, outcome. I had to translate into uh, the reality that I'm cutting uh, probably 60% Douglas fir, 30% knotty pine, and uh, the balance would be spruce. I have yet to cut poplar or birch uh, at either end of that spectrum. And you know what? It's just super easy to uh, crank up the speed here and uh, push that blade a little too hard and a little too fast. And uh, you know, when you hit some of these knot clusters, uh, it's like hitting a series of bumps on the road, uh, big bumps and uh, things aren't going to uh, end well, and uh, you'll get that wavy lumber. Again, I mentioned uh, I, I, in previous videos that I turned out more than my fair share of wavy lumber in the uh, early going of owning this little Norwood HD 36, and uh, as it turns out, it was all entirely avoidable. It was simply my naivety. Okay. Tip number three, running the blade too long between sharpening. Hey, if you notice this magnetic square hanging off the bottom of this blade, very perceptive. That's uh, a setup for another video that I'm shooting later on today. But in terms of blade uh, uh, duration between sharpenings, cutting the wood that I just described I can get about 75, maybe 90 minutes of cut time. That's different than operating time. I figure five hours of cut time in an eight hour day. So about 75 to 90 minutes after the first sharpening and after the second sharpening, I start checking it pretty closely around the one hour mark. I can maybe squeeze an hour 10, an hour and 15, and I'll show you at the end of this video how you can tell uh, incontrovertibly that the blade needs sharpening. And uh, then after the third and fourth sharpenings, I kind of start watching it pretty close around the 45, 50 minute mark. And after the fourth sharpening that I've applied to it, uh, it's off to the dumpster. And perhaps that's a, a top, whole nother topic for another day. 
how many sharpenings can you get out of your blade if you're a uh, hobbyist sawmill owner? Uh, tip number four um, would be this movable uh, blade guide right there. So I'm just gonna reach around, okay? So I'm going to get that in as close as I can to the cut. I'm not going to be able to get it in against this particular piece. It's just about running into its stop there. But when cutting a log, I'll run that within two to three inches of the log. Give that blade as much guidance as humanly possible. Tip number five, blade tension. It's all about the turns on that handle right there. And uh, uh, if there's too much tension, that's gonna become obvious really quickly. You're gonna start breaking blades right at the weld. Since I got my tension adjusted correctly, I think I've had maybe only one blade breakage. Uh, on a new blade, on the Norwood HD 36, and I know there are adjustments from time to time and from make to model, but where I landed was at five turns on a new blade, uh, five and a quarter turns after the uh, first and second sharpenings, and five and a half turns after the third and fourth sharpenings. These things do stretch just a little, and uh, uh, that seems to do the trick too little tension and that blade is going to be climbing and dropping and it's your wood uh can't or your piece of lumber is going to look like the waves of the ocean hey and i'm going to throw in one bonus tip here okay are you ready for this maybe it's my pre-cataract surgery eyes or just my overall vintage but i find that when i'm looking at a flat cut like this, when it's on the sawmill deck, I'm really challenged when looking at it with the bark on it and everything to know whether I've got waves. I've actually ended up with probably good 1 8 inch waves uh, that I didn't notice until I went to use that piece of wood or flipped it up on its side. So here's how I tell early on whether or not that blade needs sharpening or whether some other adjustment needs to be made. Since I've pretty much nailed the other adjustments, in my case, blade sharpness is the first thing I look at. So number one, I hit it with my little Milwaukee blow. Get all that debris off of there. There's typically, because we're running water on the blade or a windshield washer, antifreeze, more likely, uh, I use uh, RV antifreeze during the winter. Uh, in any event, summer or winter, there's going to be a film of wet sawdust that is sticking on here that prevents you one seeing the waves as well. So I take just a normal carpenter square and run that down the length of the cut. And then out comes the four foot level and straight edge. And I'll lay that on there and you know, when I did this cut, it's absolutely perfect. Uh, there's no gap anywhere between straight edge and this. And so if I've run a blade that I thought would be due for sharpening at around the one hour point, I may do this little exercise at the 50 minute, five zero minute point, and uh, every 10 minutes thereafter. And if it's not a precision cut, if it's not for commercial use, if I'm not giving it to my best friend, uh, I'll wait till I see the first little wandering, the first little sign of light under this straight edge. Hey, you know what? Uh, with these five tips and the bonus tip, uh, you're going to have happy cutting and happy outcomes. And I classify that as any day that I can get a straight cut and have all eight fingers and two thumbs fully intact. Happy cutting to you.